Hey, what you doing? Watching show name. What show name? Dana. Hello, and welcome to If You Could Change Your Fate, Would Ya? The show where Merida is really tired about not having her questions answered. <laughs> we'll be playing a game in which we drink tea and discuss something on our minds. Today it's going to be catcalling, and we're going to play a game called what I would have done if I wasn't afraid I was going to get murdered. We're gonna tell three stories and then give a little story of what we wish we had done. My first story is my very first instant of catcalling. And I was young, going to like some store with a friend from soccer. And we pulled up into the parking lot and she goes, oh, Lindsay, don't look over there. And naturally I'm like, what? Like, look over, and there's just like these <laughs> middle aged men with like beer cans in their truck hooting and hollering. And I was just kind of, that's weird. What would you do if you could go back in time? I'd march over there with my little soccer cleats, hand them some pamphlets of like Kierkegaard and Plato, look at all the cool things in the world, read some philosophy. You can drink beer while you do it, and then you don't have to holler at prepubescent children. Maybe he'd become one of the great minds of this age. You know it all to me. Uh, well, I mean, you could say he owed it all to himself for catcalling you. Isn't it a little sad that girls being catcalled is sort of a rite of passage? Congratulations, you are a woman. I remember my first catcalling. <laughs> it was on a dark road. I was really scared. <laughs> I don't remember my first catcalling experience, but I do remember this one particular time when I was like, you know what, I'm gonna wear those shorts that I've been a little bit self-conscious about. and. As I got out of the car, some men drove past and commented upon my posterior. You know, I was feeling self-conscious about my body and they were expressing appreciation for my body, but it never once occurred to me to be flattered. It went from like, ah, I think I might be rocking this, to like, I need to put on more clothes now. <laughs> if you, Dana, were back, back in this situation, what would you do differently? Probably give them the double bird with a deep squat. All right, what's your second story? I was walking around and this car of youths drove by and in just natural yes. New Zealand style, they drive by and I hear, marry me, form a committed relationship with me. Were I to go back in time, I would have a sign prepared that had yes <laughs> scrawled on it. And I would hold it up as they were going by and he'd be like, marry Oh, okay! <laughs> I think we'd have a great story to tell at the wedding. My second catcalling experience in Oxford, I was crossing a bridge, and there was an elderly man standing about the middle of the bridge, like a troll. I couldn't pass over the bridge without <laughs> paying the toll. <laughs> so I decided to just walk by him with my head held high. He turned to me and said that I had a very lovely part of my body, which I know for a fact he could not see. <laughs> What would you do? Are you back there, Dana? I would probably turn around, slowly walk back to him, and grab him by the lapels, lift higher and higher and higher, and then just go like that, and drop him over the edge of the bridge. So okay, my experience. last cat calling experience is one of the few times that I've been cat called from a car and been able to actually see the person in the car. That's true bravery. <laughs> and this truck pulls up, and the guy was just like, hey, pretty ladies, and we're just like, good day, sir. And he's like, you need a ride somewhere? No, sir, we are literally crossing this street to that building right behind you. Also, do you ask people this often, and does anyone ever get in the car with you? <laughs> were I to do this again, he'd be like, hey, pretty ladies. And before he even had a chance to finish his sentence, I'd be like, no, no, wait, sir. I just, I got something in my, my purse. Let me, let me get it out. Oh, oh, no, oh, there it is. Oh, oh no, wait, no, it's that, no. No, no, that. Uh, oh. oh, no, no, it's oh, that it's definitely one. that one. <laughs> is that too That's mean? a good Should one. Should I have done something nicer to him? No. I mean, I threw a guy off a bridge. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I saved, like, a group of drunken men. I've literally just been flipping people off and throwing them off bridges, yeah, so. No. So Does that mean I have to do a good deed for my last one? I mean, a good deed could also be ridding the world of <laughs> such injustice. My last one is uh, my personal favorite. Yes. 
because it's the most ridiculous. Uh, it was also in England, and my friends and I were returning after being at a ball. We were wearing, you know, floor-length gowns and heels, waiting for a light to change so we could cross the crosswalk, and a car pulled up next to us and stopped and yelled at us, Get in the boot! The boot, if you don't know, in England refers to the trunk of a car. And at first we were like, wait, he couldn't have said that. That's the stupidest thing you could possibly say. But he proceeded to say it, you know, maybe like three or four more times so he knew he was serious. And we were like, we're not going to obey you. Were I to go back to that particular situation, when he first said the words, get in the boot, I would just whip around, shout, you get in the boot! And then he would say it again, of course. And then I would take a few steps closer and say, No! You get in the boot! And then he would say it again, and I would get right up in his grill, and I would say, No! You get in the boot! Call me an elf one more time! <laughs> and he would be like, Get in the boot? And I would be like, That's it! And I would reach into his car, yank him out of the car. Ripping the seatbelt. Ripping the seatbelt, and I would like hold him really close to me and be like, Pop the trunk. I would drag him to the back of his car. He's screaming, He's his screaming. fingernails are tearing alongside. I would just throw him into the boot. What if he did like a nice, like, slow, like, mm -hmm. bye bye? <laughs> and then I would walk away from the car, and then I would, like, as I was walking away, hit the lock <laughs> button. So it would be like, bloop, bloop. <laughs> I see that. I was picturing you going like, <laughs> and this is like, <laughs> explosion. If you do get a car with a self-destruct button, don't cat call me. <laughs> I'm walking in slow motion even though it's real time. Especially I get to wear like a partially burned ball gown that's cool. <sighs> but it's just like burned on the back. Mm -hmm. Assless chaps ball gown. But it's time for our weekly obsession! Um, I have become newly obsessed with this idea I've had. I think texting, you know, in this day and age can be a little confusing. Why not embrace the ambiguity of the text speech? I don't know if you've ever read Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials series, but this character named Lyra has this thing called an alethiometer, which is a truth teller. This giant golden compass that has all these pictures around it and a little arrow points to like three pictures at a time when she asks it a question. So I decided why not turn my phone into an alethiometer and now every time I send someone a text message, you just send them three emoticons and they have to interpret what you're trying to tell them. I sent Dana like a fried egg, the head massage, and the lightning bolt. And you're like looking at your phone like, it's infinite meaning. My little sister was like, what does this mean? And I was like, what does it mean to you? Exploding. My media obsession this week is without a doubt Bob's Burgers. I just got into it very recently. And I'm almost done with the series, so I'm naturally slowing down so I don't finish as quickly. <laughs> but I thought it was gonna be terrible, but everyone was talking about it, so I watched it. And it's actually really, really funny and clever. It's hilarious. What's your food obsession? Food obsession. This semester, I've been buying frozen fruit at the grocery store and making parfaits every morning. It's, so I'm a big <laughs> fan of frozen fruit. You can do so much with it and you don't have to buy fruit in season. I think freezers are one of the greatest inventions that man has ever made. They are, and that relates to my food obsession this week, which is the <laughs> complete frozen works of Trader Joe's. Well, I'm not ashamed to say that I, I eat just frozen meats that I have then heated up in some oil. All right, thank you for tuning in, and we will see your lovely mugs next week. <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> Not nearly as much as I hate you. <laughs>